my tractor beam. All right, places everyone. One, two, three, action. Fredo, you're my older brother, and I love you. But you've been resurrected as an evil dragon, and I told you never to take sides against the family. You broke my heart! And Michael Corleone was battling dragons, and it had aliens and fantasy creatures. And then when I got home, uh, my fiance China was on a date with David Hyde Pierce. Oh, David Hyde Pierce? From Frasier? Yeah. What does it mean? Uh, I don't, this seems pretty random. Um, you know, does it have to have meaning? It could just be, you know, a bunch of junk. I don't know. Being spit out in your brain. Do dreams have meaning? I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe we should talk to experts. Let's do it. So we, we haven't even met yet. This is, we're just meeting now. All right. <laughs> uh, Dr. James. Dr. Well, James, hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to nice to well. No, we've met. We've met. Oh, uh, you had just hello, said we Dr. Met. Never James. Met. Hello. Good, good to see you again. How are you? Thank you. My first question, simple question, with a very I just want a definite answer, just one solid, factual answer. Why do we dream? Well, <laughs> one solid answer. <laughs> you don't you don't have to answer it that way. That's okay. okay. Yeah. A lot of people in our culture, especially don't view dreams as particularly significant at all. So they're just something that happens when we sleep and sort of a byproduct of rapid eye movement periods during sleep, and that's about it. Well, uh, what do you think? Well, I don't think that at all. <laughs> what is bizarre about dreams is that when you are dreaming, your brain is as active as when you are awake. You are processing a lot. Your heart rate is very, very irregular. In fact, that's probably a time where it, you are more at risk for cardiovascular events. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Who is this guy? Well, that's Dr. Emmanuel Mignot. He's the director of the Stanford Center for Sleep Sciences and Medicine. Okay, cool. Uh, what's with the dog? Well... This is Watson. Watson is a seven-month chihuahua, and he has narcolepsy, and I adopted him a couple of months ago. Most people think that the function of sleep is to save energy, so that you don't need as much food to survive. But then why would you periodically activate your brain in such a strange manner? It just doesn't make any sense. We don't know why it has been selected by natural evolution. If modern science and a narcoleptic chihuahua can't tell us why we dream, let's dig a little deeper. Throughout civilization, dreams have always had great significance. In ancient literature, like the Mesopotamian epic of Gilgamesh and the Bible, dreams often foretold the future, or were a way for God to speak to the prophets. The practice of divination through dream interpretation is called oneromancy, and was also practiced by the ancient Greeks and Egyptians. In ancient times, dream divination was seen as a perfectly reasonable way to interpret natural phenomena, and the meaning behind dreams was often taken very seriously. Then, in 1899, an Austrian neurologist by the name of Sigmund Freud published a book called The Interpretation of Dreams. And really, psychology has Freud to thank for honoring the dream to the extent that we are able to now. Freud believed that dreams were incredibly important as ways of getting at earlier memories or earlier conflicts that set us up for the kind of suffering that we're going through now. Freud's practice of dream interpretation was later expanded on by his colleague Carl Jung. Jungian psychoanalysis is still practiced today by people like Ken James. Uh, dreams are incredibly meaningful. They're, they're one of the primary ways that the unconscious discloses itself to us and brings us information that we can't really get any other way. The problem with that is everything has meaning. So I'm looking now at a red leaf and it makes me think of Canada. So you say that's the meaning. So I think it's very difficult to, to separate some hidden meaning from what I guess I would call the overt meaning. I do yeah. think, yes, if you are really, really concerned with something, you're more likely to dream about it than if you're not concerned. Could it be possible that we'll discover that it really isn't useful, it's just a random thing that we have? Yeah. It is possible, mm. after all, you know, I think there are things we have that are not completely useful. I mean, some people think that, you know, the eyebrows or things mm -hmm. like that, you know, they will slowly disappear, or the beard. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but uh, certainly, I mean, there are things that are vestigial. But it would be strange, however, because, you know, every mammal has REM sleep, birds have REM sleep. So it seems that it has a function that's very important. You know, that's a good point. Uh, because birds and mammals both evolved from reptiles, reptiles don't have REM sleep. So that means birds and mammals, separated by hundreds of millions of years of evolution, evolved the ability to dream independently. So then that means dreaming must have a biological function, not just a psychological one for higher level brains like ours. 
Yeah, because it's not like dogs and parakeets are sitting around analyzing their dreams. As far as I know. So what could be the biological function of dreaming? Most people think that it's needed for cognition, that somehow REM sleep is important for maybe be more creative, for kind of activating the brain a little bit in a random way so that new connections are being made. Creativity must have a biology to it, right? This is Dr. Paleo. He's a clinical professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Stanford. Right? The biology of creativity may be, in, may be related to dreaming. Certainly people become inspired by their dreams. Many artists are inspired by their dreams. Songwriters. God, Father, for what is it for? They should. Okay, okay, okay. That's nice. You know, dreaming doesn't only help you write songs or paint paintings. It also helps you solve real world problems like video games. A lot of gamers have said they have trouble passing a level. They fall asleep. They wake up. Pass the level. Easy peasy. OK, um, so dreams can help you solve problems. But what's actually going on in there? I mean, are you dreaming about the problem? That may be exactly what you're doing. In 2001, MIT researchers led by Dr. Matthew Wilson monitored the brain activity of lab rats, and they saw that a specific pattern of neurons would fire in the rat's hippocampus while they ran through a maze. The hippocampus is a part of the brain which plays an important role in spatial navigation and the formation of new memories. What Wilson found was that during the rat's REM sleep, the pattern of neuron activity in the hippocampus was nearly identical to the neuron activity they observed when the rats were running through the maze. So they're actually reliving the experience of running the maze. You betcha. In fact, the pattern was so similar that the researchers could tell exactly which part of the maze the rats were dreaming about based on which neurons were being activated. Interestingly enough, the rats that had a period of REM sleep after their first try on the maze performed much better on their second try than the rats who were REM sleep deprived. So dreaming can help us be more creative, solve problems. It can also help us regulate emotions. What? <laughs> <laughs> My feeling is that REM sleep is kind of a buffer. Uh, against our most savage instincts in a uh, sort of a fantasy way we can discharge the aggression in our dreams and have less of it in the waking state. Okay, but what about all our really weird dreams? Like dreams that don't make any sense or nightmares? Like how do those help us problem solve or be more creative or discharge emotions? The other part of the brain that's very active during REM sleep is the neocortex. It's responsible for higher functions like sensory perception, reasoning, conscious thought, storing long-term memories. During REM sleep, the neocortex and the hippocampus are communicating with each other. Just like you and me right now? Yeah, we're good communicators. So imagine that your neocortex is a very handsome guy working at an office. Every night when we dream, he receives a new set of short-term memories that he has to sort through and decide which are important enough to store into long-term memory. Each time the neocortex processes a new memory, you experience it as if it's really happening. In other words, you dream about it. Now, most of these memories are probably mundane and not worth storing into long-term memory. Well, speak for yourself, Craig. My dreams are usually pretty interesting. For instance, I was... Actually, those are just the dreams you remember. Studies have shown that the vast majority of dreams are just normal, routine stuff. You just don't remember them because they're not that interesting. How does the brain decide what to remember and what to forget? Well, things that invoke emotions are worth remembering. Things that make you laugh, things that get you upset are worth remembering. So you lay down that memory based on the emotional content of that memory. So what happens then if you experience something particularly traumatic? If you've had something that scared you today, something very frightening, you heard a sound of a lion or something. You learn that that sound is associated with something that's dangerous, which is the lion. So you have to lay down that memory. But in addition to laying down new memories, your neocortex also retrieves other memories with similar emotional content. By forming connections with older memories, your brain is learning from that experience and preparing yourself in case something like that ever happens again. So that's why our dreams can be so abstract. Our brain is taking the dominant emotion that we're feeling and then retrieving memories or symbols to try to represent that experience. Right, but sometimes a memory can be so traumatic that it's difficult to get over. It's important to learn from those troubled memories, but at some point you gotta move on. And that's how dreams can act as a kind of psychotherapy. So what happens in dreaming, one of the theories of dreaming is that we dream to remember, but we also dream to forget. In the following days or weeks, you may have the same dream of that same terrifying experience. So you want to relive those things and see the connections, but you want to remember the things without the emotional overlay. So your brain will look up old memories with similar emotional content and form connections with the new memory. Essentially, your brain is integrating that traumatic experience with the rest of your life. Over time, the emotion will become less powerful and overwhelming. This can help you move past the trauma, freeing your brain to explore other connections. 
So the next time you hear a scary lion, instead of being, ah, this is the worst thing ever, your brain is gonna be like, ah, this is frightening, but I think I'm gonna be okay. Right, but that function of dreaming is probably more applicable to our ancestors who had to deal with life and death situations all the time. Sure, but I can see how this could apply to everyday, you know, more moderate emotions like being nervous or embarrassed. Yeah. Is that it? Is that why we dream? There is no proof that there is a specific purpose of dreaming. <sighs> there are many speculations and theories. The thing that's very impressive is that in a newborn infant, uh, half of the sleep is REM sleep. And since a newborn infant on the average sleeps 16 hours a day, that is eight hours of REM sleep, dreaming sleep every day. Now people ask, what does a newborn infant dream about? And there's a question. <laughs> Yeah. have no answer for that un unless dreams are in, in effect inherited or, or certain basic dream patterns are built into the brain. The idea of inheritance is troublesome because it's a little bit too individualistic. In other words, I inherit things, you inherit things. Actually, we have access to this vast sort of seedbed of images, themes, motifs just by virtue of being human. So it isn't so much that we inherit it as almost we come from it. This is what Carl Jung referred to as the collective unconscious. So it's possible that babies are dreaming about themes and ideas that are inherent in all humans. Sure, but maybe it's not as much of a mystery as it seems. Yeah, maybe babies are just dreaming about being babies, which would mean they're just dreaming about laying there. Lame. Well, no, think about it. Your newborn baby, everything you experience is completely new. Every sight, every smell, every sound. Everything is a possibly frightening, possibly amazing experience. Imagine what must be happening in your brain. You must be going into overload, bombarded with all these new experiences. If we think back to the rats dreaming about the maze, could a newborn infant's brain be replaying every experience in order to organize and learn from the world? After all, they're dreaming for as much time as they're awake. If so, it's no surprise they're dreaming so much. They're problem solving the entire world. They're learning to navigate the ultimate maze, life. Wow. That was a really well-crafted monologue, man. Thank you, Craig. Except for that last part, that was pretty dumb. Well, how would you have ended it? Maze of life, maze of life. It's a crazy life, it's a crazy life. It's a maze of life, it's a maze of life. So it turns out that sleep and dreams are still a mystery. But one thing we know for sure is that we need our sleep. And you can click there to learn about how. Another thing we know for sure is that you can like this video. We also know that you can subscribe by clicking up there. Also, we do have a Patreon page. If you really like our show and you want to support it, you can go subscribe over there. It's linked right up there. I guess that's a lot of things we know for sure. We're very smart. But we're not smart about knowing how many things we know for sure. Thank you. The rats they run around in the maze. maze. We know what they're dreaming. It's so crazy. <laughs> 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 All right. yeah.